This is a brief introduction to the Noton for painting class. I'm going to demo this or talk about this digitally before we do the analog paint along videos. Um, so it's just easier to explain some concepts. So this should only take a few minutes because the Noton is a very uh, simple concept. It is basically a, a dark light divide and you're making a very clear decision about what is in shadow and what is in light. Typically it is one to four values. We are going to do our first notons with just a single value as if we're sort of drawing with paint. Um, we won't be going back in with white, we'll only be using just black paint. So if we look in a, at an example, this is a painting by Corot. C O R O T, who always had a strong sense of the of the noton, even though they probably didn't call it call it that necessarily. The noton is basically a strict division between light and shadow. So here it's pretty clear where the light and the shadows are. I'm going to go through and just do a little study here and trace through the image and find exactly where these shadows are. And then I will sort of turn off the actual image itself. And we'll be left with this area. So the idea of the noton is to state the darks and lights in as simple a way as possible while continuing to be descriptive and not really um, rendering. What you don't want to get caught up in is this idea of getting um, value transitions or doing a lot of work in the differentiations. If you're doing digital studies, you can paint through it like this, or you can do uh, the lasso bucket tool. Um, I think working digitally is always um, it's always interesting, and it's always worth doing. Because um, there's just a lot of advantages to it, and you can do some interesting things that you can't do in the analog world, like layers. To me, that's one of the most important digital things. Well, or just like the ability to be to go back through layers. I think that's huge. So what this also focuses on is the shapes. And there's really only three basic shapes that you have to worry about. You have your circle, your triangle, and your rectangle. And everything is going to be kind of a version of those things. So what's important when you do these kind of master studies of the notons is to, is to be very specific about them and really look at all of the detail that you can. It's simplicity, but it's also descriptive and unique. Okay, we have a decision to make here, and um, with these trees, it could go either way, or these little bushes and shrubberies, because you could say, well, they're dark, but they're in the light, so they should be light, um, which is a pretty common approach to the noton. So there we go. 
So we're going to do is we're going to put a layer in between there, get white, bucket fill that, and you're left with sort of the shadows of what is actually in that image. Now some of them are a little bit faint. I could probably bump them up, be a little darker. But you get the idea. You can tell that it's architectural even from just that bit of the noton. Okay, so we're gonna close that out. We're not gonna worry about that, and we're gonna analyze the first uh, painting in our paint along that we're actually gonna be um, that we're actually gonna be working with here. Um, so. Here we go. Okay, so this one, when we're looking at this image, this one's tricky because there's a lot of light um, bouncing around. There's a lot of ambient light. There's not a lot of direct shadow. Um, so here, I think it's important to anchor on to this shadow right here because this is the obvious shadow. That's for sure in shadow. Um, and then you can see the line right here. Okay, so this is for sure in shadow, and I'm going to eliminate that little sign because I don't think it's very descriptive of the actual engine housing here. So we can be sure that there's that that is in shadow. Um, so that means that there's a light source kind of coming from the top left, which we can also see back here. Okay. So we can actually see that cast shadow on the wall, and it's and it has that little shape there. So we can start with like the most obvious shadows, right? Now, if we know that the shadow ends here because we've rendered cylinders so much, we can assume that there's going to be a shadow that runs along here, and that all of this side is going to be in shadow. We're going to eliminate any kind of reflections. Or anything like that. We're going to get light on the rim there. So now we have a very clearly defined and clearly stated shadow area, which I think is good. Okay, now we can work into some more um, uh, some more obvious shadows. There's going to be a ground shadow. Um, and actually we're gonna have to exaggerate that because we want to imply that there's direct lighting here so we're gonna have to do something like that and eliminate some of the detail in the ground to get this idea that this thing is casting a big shadow so I'm gonna bucket fill a lower layer so we can almost see the structure of what's going on here, um, but we need to differentiate a few more things to make it perfectly clear, right? So we need to find this back edge, right? And what we don't want to do is just draw an outline, because if we draw an outline, we're not really painting, we're just drawing. Um, so what we do is we find things in the background that are dark um, that allow us to find that edge. So we can use this I-beam, and the bottom of this I-beam helps us find that edge. Off the I-beam, there's a shadow here. One of the, um, well, there's an obvious shadow here, too. There's some objects here. And we're going to see this again when we do the actual demo. Then you'll notice that there's corrugation in the panels that are used to construct the walls back here. So we can pick up on some or a lot of the corrugation, and that's going to give us a whole series of places where the corrugation stops that give us the outer contour by implication.
here I'm just tracing on top of the photo. Here we got some shadows down, down in this area. So we can kind of block those in and leave a couple of shapes here and there. It's got some ground shadows. Oh yeah, I was going to show. Yeah, so now we can kind of see where this contour is, even though we don't actually have a directly drawn contour. Um, that's the nice thing about the brain is that it wants to fill in these gaps for you. So here we can find the side that has shadows on all of these um, bits of extruded metal and support structure for it. Shadows down here. And we're not differentiating in terms of any kind of sub values or substructures. We're literally just finding what is in shadow and what is in light. And if it's in shadow, it doesn't matter what color the object is, we're putting some shadow on it. Here where it gets complicated, we can get a little textural. Again, there's that I-beam up in the corner. So now this is really becoming like a composition. Okay. So, I mean, there we have it. That's the basic kind of noton structure of this photograph. Um, and if we start overlaying, it becomes like pretty clear that we're fairly accurate with it, even though it's really quite simple, right? So what we're looking for is just kind of the minimum to differentiate one object from the next. If we introduce a third tone, we can actually do a lot more differentiation. And that is what we will do in the um, upcoming assignment. We'll basically take this idea of the two-tone noton, and we'll be able to add a third tone. So you'll notice that we can't really differentiate um, we're still having trouble differentiating the sort of uh, structure here at the bottom and we're having trouble differentiating the, the st structure from the background still just a little bit so there are things that we could do um, like we could go in with this half tone and begin to put that into the background and as soon as we do something like that we see the differentiation happen and um, that's where we'll head next so that's it for this concept, and we'll practice that in the next video, which you can paint along to or um, pause as needed to get your uh, five notons done.